Tracking Through Theory 4. The Piano Keyboard The piano keyboard Whether we are playing the bass or other instruments, having and knowing piano keyboard skills is essential. It helps us understand and reinforce music theory concepts. Much easier to explain. If you don't have a real piano or keyboard, you can always get a virtual one. The piano keyboard's white and black keys provide a wide range of pitches. A standard piano has 88 keys, 52 white keys, and 36 black keys. Each key on the piano keyboard is tuned to the sound frequency of a particular pitch. Remember the seven musical pitches? You can see that each of the seven pitches correspond to each one of the white keys, and each key represents one pitch. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. We can hear that the pitch goes higher as we go to the right. We have learned that pitches that are eight letter names apart make an octave. Octave-related pitches belong to the same pitch class and have the same letter name. The pitch class E represents every E in every octave. Now see those black keys? Immediately to the left of any group of two black keys is pitch class C. And immediately to the right of any group of two black keys is pitch class E. Immediately to the left of any group of three black keys is pitch class F and immediately to the right of any group of three black keys is pitch class B. Here, we can see all the white keys on the standard piano. And here is the middle C. It is the C closest to the middle of the piano. This C is often used as a reference point. When we name pitches on the piano keyboard, it is good to specify their actual octave placement. Let's name all the Cs first. The lowest C on the piano is C1. Then comes C2, C3, C4, which is the middle C, C5, C6, C7, and lastly, C8, the highest C on the piano. With all those Cs, one can now number the other pitches. Here's how these pitches on the white keys are numbered and referenced on the piano keyboard. Notice that there are two white keys below C1. They are A0 and B0. Here's how these pitches look like on the grand staff. This is a grand staff. A grand staff is a combination of two staffs put together, most likely a treble clef and a bass clef. The clefs at the beginning or far left of the staff helps us identify the notes on the staff's lines and spaces. In this video, I will focus on the notes notated in the bass clef, as shown on the piano keyboard. I will explain the notes on the treble clef in a future video. Previously, we have learned about the bass clef in tracking through theory number 2, the bass. The bass clef, or the F clef, is used for lower notes for a pianist's left hand or lower instruments like the bass or the cello. Let's start from the middle C. And here's how it looks like on the bass staff. If this is C4, then going downwards, this will be B3, A3, G3, F3, E3, D3, C3, B2, A2, G2, F2, E2, D2, and C2. These lines are called ledger lines. Notes lower than the staff have lines drawn through them but never below them. Here you see the notes A1, B1, C2, D2, and E2. A1, C2, and E2 are landmark pitches. See how the ledger lines are drawn to notate these notes? These ledger lines below the bass staff have lines drawn through the notes, but never below them. 
Similarly, for these landmark pitches C4, E4, G4, and D4 and F4 above the staff, these notes higher than the staff have lines drawn through them but never above them. Now let me show you how the bass notes of the piano relates to the pitches on the bass guitar. With this one example, you will be able to figure out the rest. When I see this A note on the bass staff and play the open A string on the bass guitar, this pitch is actually the same pitch as this A1 white key on the piano. Okay, if you remember in an earlier slide, I mentioned that this A is the A2 on the piano. This means that when bassists read this A note on the bass staff, we are actually playing one octave lower than what this actual note represents. When we play this note on the piano, it is the A2. The bass will always play the pitch one octave lower. Now, let me explain the black key pitches using a section of the piano keyboard. The black keys have names in relation to the white key pitches. The black key immediately above to the right of any white key gets the white key's name plus a sharp. C stepping up to the right a half step or a semitone, you get C sharp. D stepping up to the right a half step or a semitone, you get D-sharp. Similarly, F stepping up to the right, you'll get F-sharp. G to the right, a semitone, you'll get G-sharp. A stepping up to the right, a half step or a semitone, you'll get A-sharp. Similarly, the black key immediately below to the left of any white key gets the white key's name plus a flat. So that means D stepping down to the left a half step or a semitone, you will get D flat. E stepping down, you will get E flat. G to the left, a half step or a semitone, you will get G flat. A stepping down to the left, a half step or a semitone, you will get A flat. And B stepping down to a left, half step or a semitone, you will get B flat. This means that the black keys on the piano keyboard has two possible names. One with a sharp and one with a flat. Hmm, do they sound familiar? Yes. We spoke about these pitches as enharmonic pitches, and these sharps and flats are called accidentals. Please note that not all sharped or flatted pitches are black keys. If you raise an E, a half step or semitone to the closest possible key on the keyboard, you will get a white key, not a black one. This means E sharp is a white key and harmonic with F. Similarly, if you raise a B, a half step or semitone to the closest possible key on the keyboard, you will get a white key too. That means B sharp is a white key and is enharmonic with C. Now, if you lower the F, a half step or semitone to the nearest key on the keyboard, you will get F flat, which is enharmonic with E. Similarly, if you lower the C, a half step or semitone to the nearest key on the keyboard, you will get C flat, which is enharmonic with B. Having two names to identify one pitch can be confusing, so we decide which one to use depending on where the music is heading. We can see that the sharps and flats on the piano are mainly the black keys. For the bass, the sharps and the flats are found in the fret between the letter names. Half steps or semitones, as I have been saying a lot, and whole steps or whole tones are the most basic building blocks of music. You see, music is made up of intervals, and an interval is the distance between two notes. A half step or semitone is the interval between any pitch and the next closest pitch. On the piano, C to C sharp is a half step or semitone. On a bass, using a G string as an example, the C to C sharp is a half step or semitone. As with C sharp to D on the piano and here on the bass, we can see the half step or semitone. Here E to E flat is a half step or semitone. And here, E to E flat is a half step or semitone. 
Now, here's E to F is a half step or semitone, and B to C is a half step or semitone as well. Here you can see them on the bass guitar. These are all half steps or semitones. Here are the half steps on the keyboard. A half step spans a white key and a black key, or black to white, except in the case of B to C and E to F. For the bass, you move a half step or semitone when you go up one fret or go down one fret. A whole step is a combination of two half steps. Two half steps make a whole step or whole tone. In this example, C to D is a whole step or whole tone. On the bass, you can see that when you go from C to D, you go up two frets. Similarly, C sharp to D sharp is a whole step or whole tone. C sharp to D sharp on the bass, a whole tone going up two frets. Now going down from E flat to D flat is a whole step or whole tone too. Just like going down two frets from E flat to D flat on the bass guitar, that's a whole step or whole tone. Here are the whole steps or whole tones for the white keys on the piano keyboard. And here are the whole steps or whole tones for the black keys on the piano keyboard. On the piano keyboard, a whole step or whole tone spans two keys of the same color, except in the case of B to C sharp and E to F sharp, C to B flat and F to E flat. For the bass, every time you go up or down two frets on the same string, that's a whole tone or a whole step. Exercises. In this video, I won't be going through the exercises together with you, like what I did previously. Instead, I have posted the answers to these exercises in the description box below. I've also attached this page with the bass guitar and the piano keyboard with all the sharps and flats. You may use it to find your answers. Exercise 1. Using the piano keyboard to help you, write the letter name and octave number for the pitches below. The first one is done for you. Exercise 2. Name the pitch that is a half step above or below and name an enharmonic equivalent where possible. The first one is done for you. The pitch that is a half step above D is D sharp or E flat, the enharmonic pitch. Exercise 3. Identify the distance between the two notes. The interval could be a whole step or whole tone, or a half step or a semitone, or neither. The first one is done for you. A D flat to an E flat is a whole step or whole tone. Okay, let's play. Can you guess this word as you play these notes on the strings A and E on your bass guitar? B, E, E, F. The word is beef. Now can you guess this word as you play these notes on the strings D and G? E, D, G, E. The word is edge. Let's play notes on the piano. In order to play this game, Print out the flashcards attached in the description box below and add them to the flashcards you have collected from previous videos. Pick out the flashcard, one of them, and name the note on the flashcard and its octave placement on the piano. Then find and play this note on the piano keyboard. So for example, you picked out this flashcard, the D sharp, and this D sharp is a D sharp 3 on the piano keyboard. You can play this game as many times as you like, identifying the notes on the keyboard and playing them. That's it. That's all I have for the piano keyboard.